room. Right. Yeah. Um, first of all, before I start, I would just uh, like to thank Ville Wasp Provisor um, for sponsoring the conference, um, as well as speaking. Uh, there was a time early on when we were looking at the bookings and we were going, um, but having that sponsorship in place actually meant that we we, we stuck with it. So um, and obviously. We, we like the money. It means it's cheaper for you to come as well. Um, so um, just thanks for that. Okay. Um, so uh, this is um, talking about uh, an assignment I had in New Zealand on, ver on various bits and bobs at t times earlier this year. So what I'll do is I'll talk it through. Uh, you should always give an overview. I'm told. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them again. I'm just going to put that up because you can read. Okay. <laughs> That's the structure because of time. Um, Essentially, background, Solid Energy is the national coal mining company so, of uh, New Zealand. Uh, state owned, but required to operate independently as a profit making company. Now, um, anybody who's in a state owned company, uh, obviously, and you've got to operate independently, that's fine until the proverbial hits the fan when politicians come down on you. And also there might be a little bit of nudging in certain directions. Okay, so um, profit with a, a social um, uh, social uh, care size, shall we say. Uh, its largest mind is Stockton, which contributes to 70% of solid energy's profits. So in 2008, the mine cost something like 90 uh, million New Zealand bucks, which is around about 40 million to run. Um, but in that bumper year before the recession hit, uh, the total income was about 140 million New Zealand. So at that time, it's extremely profitable. All right. Um, it's open cast, and one of the reasons why it's extremely profitable is it's open cast, and therefore has a low cost base compared with um, mines which you have to sink into the ground and so on. Um, some of my terminology might be a bit vague because I'm mainly, I, my background is in construction, so this was a sort of uh, uh, come and help us set up a mining alliance, so called. Um, the USP of Stockton is its low cat ash and phosphorus. So uh, you evaluate coal against six criteria. And it had high, or low in ash, low in phosphorus, which meant that it was extremely good for steel making, apparently. Yeah, and that's why it was in demand uh, compared with, with other ones. Um, the mining process uh, on this, essentially, you've got overburden. So what they do is they remove overburden. They then dig out the coal. Uh, they then replace the overburden from somewhere else. And then they backfill and plant and everything like that. And it's, the theory goes it's all environmentally friendly and everything like that, yeah? um, which we'll come on to. In terms, and uh, look at, just look at that view up there, like that every day there. <laughs> right. Um, so in terms of that's what at the top of the mountain, what the coal ridge looks like. So there's, there's the coal. It's dark. Um, and then you've got the overburden on top. OK. Um, so. And in terms of once it's excavated from the ground, it's put on these haulage grounds. I should say a lot of these, a number of these pictures come from Solid Energy. That one does, therefore it's very good quality. Some of them I grabbed off the internet. I was trying to get more pictures last week, but the person was on a holiday. Um, so some of them are a bit more variable quality. Taken along the haul road, put in this coal loading facility, which has basic, shall we say, mixing uh, capabilities. So you grab it from different areas and mix it. Uh, put on a train at the bottom of the mountain and taken over the Southern Alps to the ports. Okay, so that's the, the, the basic process. So issues and challenges and I will now come out of this and hopefully I can go into, hopefully, please, if I come out, oops, minimize, no I can't, I was, Google Maps, there we go, right, okay, so um, this seems a smaller screen than it when, when it was just on the screen. So, um, some of you will think that where I come from, which is Bristol, is um, if you're from London, is you know the back of beyond and so on. Okay, so I'll talk with my, my West Country accent, or right, we love her. Um, New Zealand is a bit more remote. So if I go, uh, so we are here, and we want to go over to there, and you might notice there's, is it that one? Uh, well, this. Kind of mucks up my um, presentation, doesn't it? Right, well, we'll go back to this. <laughs> right, um, right. So, Stockton is in New Zealand. That's remote. 
it's 2,000 kilometres or 1,200 miles from, from Australia. So the Tasman Strait isn't, a bit, isn't like the English Channel, shall we say. Okay. It's on the South Island. The population of New Zealand is 4 million. Of those, 1 million live in, on the South Island. Of those, half of it live in Christchurch. And by the time you take out the rest of it, uh, there's not a lot of other people, a lot of sheep in the rest of it. Um, Stockton is near Westport and there are three big towns on the west, the wild west coast. Um, Hokitita, Greymouth and Westport. Westport as you drive into it says population 6,000. <sighs> big town eh? Um, when you actually ask people they say oh no the population is only 3,000, it's, it's 6,000 in the area. Yeah? Now if I had the map, you could, the other thing about it is that you could see that um, there are no deep ports on the west coast, so it has to, that's why it has to be taken over to Christchurch. Um, and it actually, the trains actually go past head office. And the joke is in Westport is that as each wagon goes past head office, people go ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Um, but anyway, um, and if I had the map, you could also actually see the, um, I could do the, um, the altitude. And essentially, it's, it's right it's next, it, it goes from, um, the mine itself goes from 400 metres up to 1,000 metres. So it's basically on the side of a hill or a mountain, you could say. Yeah. Now, we, we recently we've had all the, the weather in um, the Lake District. The average lake weather, uh, rainfall in the Lake District is 4,000 millimetres, and that's what it is at sea level. By the time you get to the top of the mine, it's 8,000 millimetres, so twice the rainfall of the Lake District. Now, that has implications in terms of infrastructure works because not only do you need to put in spend a lot of money putting in the infrastructure to get to the coal you need to actually drain it properly yeah oh sorry and it being right next to the national park and the new zealanders take their national park seriously so not like us the standards we have in our national parks for building regs etc are you know we can build it providing it conforms you can't do that in new zealand so this is the mine that's the national park yeah if, they, if there's any pollution which goes into it, they have to inform the authorities, and if it's significant, they could shut down the mine. Yeah? So I think it's something like 30% of New Zealand is National Park. Okay. Um, going, um, it's running out of good coal, um, as in they are mi finishing mining the really good areas, and the other areas which they're going to open up, the coal is of more variable quality, but, and the average is of lesser, qu lesser quality. Um, and its health and safety uh, and environmental record could be better. Now that's just not to say it was bad, but there's an attitude on site of, well, you know, we use big kit, um, accidents happen, you know, and that wasn't really acceptable to senior management. And in terms of environmental incidents, there hadn't been uh, any environmental incidents which had led to pollution into the National Park, but all spillages which were contained, etc. Were, weren't uncommon, shall we say. Yeah? And again, that wasn't really acceptable to them. So, consequently, because of its remoteness, they had real problems recruiting and retaining qu the quality and quantity of professional staff. Yeah? So they thought that the overall professionalism of the mine could be improved. Because it's halfway up a hill, 45% of the cost of mine was in civil engineering. So putting in the infrastructure to get to the coal, getting the drainage in and everything like that versus 5% typical in an Australian open cast mine. The coal is being double handled because of the variable nature of it. So they would lift it out, put it in piles, test it, sit it there for three weeks or something like that, then supposedly mix it. Um, so this picture just illustrates it. First of all, um, you know that what I said earlier about them, um, you know, they, they move one area and then remediate another and so on and so on. If you actually we'd done the Google thing, you could see a great big area, which was a big scar. They weren't doing it, yeah, essentially. Those are the big coal, 500 tonnes worth of coal up there. That's a big earth-moving kit there. And this bit, well, they haven't quite remediated it, have they? Um, one of the things that they were was that they were building up huge environmental liabilities, which was causing the director of strategy and risk big concern. And that was because the project, the team there, were always in reactive mode. It was get the coal out, yeah? Okay, so it relates to that. Um, what it would do is, oh yes, we've got the test results, yep, okay, we can plan that out. And then actually we need to get the order out, and it needs to be this quality. Gra oh, we'd better grab the good coal. And if they carried on doing that, 
um, the life of the mine could be reduced from, say, 20, 25 years to 10 years. Now, that was one of the, uh, it took a bit of digging, but that was actually one of the, the real key things they were actually trying to get out of it. This whole alliance was raised the level of performance in terms of the planning and which coal they extracted to prolong that life. And that wasn't just for their commercial bit, that was because the whole community would die. The, the mine employed 650 people directly and 200 contractors on a regular basis. Put that into context of a population of 6,000, yeah, the area dies if, that, if the mine dies. So, what did they try doing? Well, they tried bringing in top quality people, but they hadn't stayed. They bought variable best practice, and I don't necessarily mean poor best practice, different best practice, yeah? I think it should be done like this. No, I think it should be done like that. Uh, and hadn't achieved the critical mass, and that was partly because they had come at different times, and partly because they bought individuals rather than their systems, yeah, with them. They tried bringing in change consultants, but it required the commitment of the people to actually contribute. And when you're always far fighting, yeah, 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 the change consultant, yeah, but I haven't got time to do that. I've got to actually get the train out. Um, uh, and there's a limit to what us people like us consultants can do if you're not engaging and if we're not experts in what you're doing. Um, you know, the management, there's also quite a lot of rivalry as in most countries between the rest of the country and the capital, shall we say. So fancy, fancy change consultants coming in from Auckland weren't viewed in a positive light. Um, I won't say what the, the nickname is for Aucklanders, but anyway. 